The Adventure of Johnny Waverley You can understand the feelings of a mother, said Mrs. Waverley, for perhaps the sixth time. She looked appealingly at Poirot. My little friend, always sympathetic to motherhood in distress, gesticulated reassuringly. But yes, but yes, I comprehend perfectly. Have faith in Papa Poirot. The police, began Mr. Waverley. His wife waved the interruption aside. I won't have anything more to do with the police. We trusted to them, and look what happened. But I've heard so much of Monsieur Poirot and the wonderful things he'd done that I felt he might possibly be able to help us. A mother's feelings, Poirot hastily stemmed the reiteration with an eloquent gesture. Mrs. Waverley's emotion was obviously genuine, but it assorted strangely with her shrewd, rather hard type of countenance. When I heard later that she was the daughter of a prominent steel manufacturer who had worked his way up in the world from an office boy to his present eminence, I realized that she had inherited many of the paternal qualities. Mr. Waverley was a big, florid, jovial-looking man. He stood with his legs straddled wide apart and looked the type of the country squire. "'I suppose you know all about this business, Monsieur Poirot?' The question was almost superfluous. For some days past, the papers had been full of the sensational kidnapping of little Johnny Waverley, the three-year-old son and heir of Marcus Waverley Esquire of Waverley Court, Surrey, one of the oldest families in England. With the main facts I know, of course, but recount to me the whole story, monsieur, I beg of you, and in detail, if you please.' 